Good day everyone. First of all, this is Hazel Ancanensian, the leader of Group 1 and 40 Days Lesson. We will tackle about the Community Project Implementation Status Reporting. So what are the topics that we will discuss during this lesson? So our Community Project Implementation Status Reporting talks about the Accomplishment Report. So we will discuss on how to make the community the accomplishment report as well as the format in making the accomplishment report and that's important details to be included in our accomplishment report so first let us discuss what is a accomplishment report so accomplishment report is a regularly prepared status report that provides an overview of what was achieved during the given period so accomplishment report is a regular prepared status so from the word accomplishment so it is the status or a report of the status of our community project so it provides an overview or the summary of what was achieved during the implementation so it provides an specific information related to teamwork progress so it is something like a timeline of what was achieved from the proposal up to the um, implementation it also includes the goals established and achieved. So during our project proposal, we are tasked to have our objectives in our community project. So it talk, the, the accomplishment report will also include if those objectives were um, achieved during the implementation of our community project so it also includes the problems arisen and decisions made so during the implementation of our project we may encounter uh, um, problems so we will include this in our accomplishment report as well as the solutions or the decisions that we've made in order to solve those Problem. So, accomplishment report also um, includes the description of unplanned activities. So, during our project proposals and in our implementation, there are um, activities that we will um, have during the implementation that was not stated in our project proposal or uh, in our paper so we will also include those activities that was unplanned in our accomplishment report why did it happen and how did it happen so this project or this accomplishment report or the project process is managed by the team leader who collects all the necessary information, conduct the analysis, track tasks, and manage the team members. So the um, the leader will ha will manage the accomplishment report. So he will he is the one who will collect all the necessary information to be included in our accomplishment report. He or she will conduct the analysis and also he or she will manage the task that is assigned to his or her members. However, if if the accomplishment report will be conducted or will be made by group. So our project proposal, our project implementation or the community project is a group activity. So not only the leader will um, do all the tasks, but also his member or her member will help him made or make the accomplishment report. Good day everyone. So I'm Roland P. Amar Jr. Based Mathematics 1A. And my assigned topic is all about how to format the accomplishment report. So the first one is open with a summary paragraph. Then at the top of the accomplishment report, summarize the overview and tell the readers the overall um, achievements. Perhaps you are writing an accomplishment report for a non-profit organization or makanang mga organization nga dili binayran or for organization nga for charity advocacy something in a so you could summarize successes such as such such as the fact you you organize events the benefit is 
stakeholders gain industry recognition and create linkages with partners. So, dapat naka-summarize na yung mga accomplishment or mga successes ni mo o naka-organize na siya. You don't need to bug the summary down with too many specific. So, dili ni mo siya katag-katago na siya, no? Kaya basig redundant, redundant ra kay siya. So, you are summarizing the key points here, no? Mga important details sa imo ang accomplishment report. Then, you are providing the overview. Try not to make uh, the report too long. So, dili na kayo ni mo dapat pataas-taas yun imong accomplishment report. Basig, maboring ang imo ang mga readers. Then, two pages is good for good roll of thumb. So, two pages is okay na siya. Unless the, em the employer, employer has a specific suggestion. And check with the employer to see if there is recommended format. So, kung nai-recommended nyo format, so, katoang siya ang sundun. Then, kadua is provide details to back up each summary point. Now, you need to back up the key points in the opening summary with the specifics further down in the report. So, use so, there are use outline form. Then, organize different areas into their own section and use sub points beneath each either. For example, Perhaps one of your section is event is events organized and held. So, mag on sa kag provide kag mga details so dapat naka outline form siya. Then dapat ang iyang section then na section then mag use din ka og sub points para sa iya ha para mas masabtan masabtan siya kung unsa purpose niya then under the under such a header you could list with bullets or letters a brief summary paragraph or each event held its purpose and how it advanced the group mission and be specific here so under ato nga unsa niya section or the header o oh, dapat naka bullet form or naka letter with with kani uh, a brief summary para kung masabda ni mo siya kung unsay purpose niya then and be specific sa mga imong ipamutang dapat direct to the point lang yun siya o di na ni mo pa taas taas yun pa para dili na redundant kayo imo ang, ang accomplish, accomplishment report good day everyone so this time I will report the continuation report of Mr. Amar which is how to format the accomplishment report. So number three, use professional formatting. So what is the importance of using professional formatting? It makes information more accessible to the reader by creating and labeling sections, uh, headings, highlighting keywords or ideas, bold italics or list and making a good impression professional look and feel appropriate font choice for the document types so don't just wait the report together you want the report to look organized in a professional font and on a nice paper so letter a create a title and center it at the top of the page use bold subjects to organize information so the title must be in the top of the of the page and center it. Then use a bold subheads. Then letter B. At the top of the report, provide the basics. Present the dates that are covered by the accomplishment report, and then the name and the title of the person who prepared it. So, for example. At the top, we have accomplishment report, and then the next is company accomplishment report, and then the next is the date, which is, uh, example, May 20, 
May 2022 to June 2022. So that is example on how to present the dates and the title and the name of the person who prepared it. So number four, keep a journal throughout the time period in question. So what is the importance of journal and what is a journal? So a journal is a detailed account that records all activities and transactions happening in the time period covered. So it is very important because it it gives a lot easier to record all activities in in your study. So as what I said later that is it is very important because it will be a lot easier if you gather accomplishment as they happen. So letter A, keep a journal or folder in which you track accomplishments throughout the time period of study. It will make your life a lot easier when it's time to sit and write. Because you don't need to memorize what is happening in your in the time of the period. So all you have to do is to write to sit and write because you have a journal. And then, if you don't this, you find yourself forgetting important accomplishment that happens toward the beginning of the time period. So, if you have, if you don't have the journal, so you may find yourself difficult, and you may find yourself forgetting some important accomplishment that happens toward uh, that covered in your accomplishment report. So, journal is very important in an accomplishment report because it is a detailed day-by-day day dates and and the transaction or activities that happening uh, in the time period. So, and that's all. Thank you. Good day, everyone. So, I am the science reporter for the part of how to create strong content. So, number one, remind people of your performance goals and expectations. So, you should remind people what the goals were at the beginning of the time period being studied. What were the objectives? What are the expectations of the job? And if you don't know, get your employer to provide them so our task is incomplete when we don't have objectives and of course the expectations so why do we need to remind people of our performance goals and of and of course the expectations so goals and expectations should describe what you are setting out to accomplish what success looks like specific actions that will be taken and how is it measured so for a then explain how those were met with actual numbers the point is to compare what your activities or results were against original projects so why do we need to compare it so seeing your results compared side by side allows you to see your data in context allowing you to more accurately reflect on just how meaningful these differences between data sets are. So, that's it. Okay, so let us proceed to number two, provide visuals. So, we have to include a few charts and graphs if you think they will help the reader to visualize the data you are presenting. So, visual elements are such graphs, charts, tables, photographs, or diagrams that can capture your reader's attention and help them understand complicated ideas more fully, such as trends in data and more. So remember that some of the report readers are going to only scan it because they are probably busy. So visual aids can get your point across more effectively sometimes. So those um, visuals can condense large amounts of information into easy to understand formats that clearly and effectively communicate important points. So let us proceed to letter B. Don't inundate the reader with too many graphs though. Select one or two that emphasize the key points. So statistics and graphs 
can be misleading. So, unfortunately, the person making the graphs or writing the figures can convey more misinformation than information depending on the intent. So, we as readers of such data, therefore, must be careful in how we interpret the information presented to us. So, better, we have to uh, minimize using um, visual elements. Good afternoon everyone, this is Jordan M. Vulgaras from BCN Math 1E. My assigned topic for today's report is the how to create strong content and focus on CAR. CAR means challenge, action, result. Challenge refers something that needs great mental or physical effort in order to be done successfully and therefore test a person's ability. Action. Refer to the accomplishment of a thing usually over a period of time, in stage or within the possibility of repetition. Result. Are a consequence, effect, or outcome you are taking. Next. This technique helps you document your accomplishment, stand for challenge, action, Result, this will help you organize your accomplishment. So, CAR is an abbreviation meaning challenge, action, and result. Briefly describe the circumstance or challenge, the action you took to result it, and that outcome. CAR helps you to accomplish the document you are working on. This will also help you to organize and track your accomplishment. Next. Figure out the challenge of the chap, then outline the action you are you have taken to address it, and then document the result. For example, let's say you are a manager in a restaurant. So, the challenge is lines were becoming too long during dinner rush hour, with customer complaints increasing by 10%. So, the action is push back. One with dress start time by one hour to increase support staff during rush hour. So the result is customer complaints about wait times drop to two and eighty percent decline. So next, the key point is to specific her general accomplishments such as I am a team leader aren't as a meaningful because anyone can say things like that. The key is to connect result to course issue and demonstrate success through data and specific. So in this case or situation, we need to address the challenge we are experienced to avoid further problems. After addressing the challenge, we need to take immediate action to solve the problem. Ultimately, we need to evaluate the result or outcome of the action to measure the effectiveness of measure we apply to address the challenge. Good day everyone, my name is Kier in Monteron. I will be the one who assigned to discuss the number 4 and 5 of how to create a strong content. Number 4. Present your methodology. If your program involves some kind of data collection, it's a good idea to briefly explain the methodology that you use in doing so. So, sa so number four, if atong research or program da okay, na ay involved na collecting of data, mas nindot daw kaning atong state or gaan ato kaalam ang mubasa about kung unsa atong gigamit na method. Then, A. Let the readers know that rationally for the chosen survey methodology. Explain the benefits and results of the survey. Why was this a credible method? Method. For example, using the restaurant, explain 
why it makes sense to use complaints as a met methodology. Also, if magsarbi ta, mas tindot jud o, ibutang na to, ang pa sa paper ang um, atong rationale or ang um, purpose sa atong research ug unsa ang mga benefits na mahatag aning atong research why it makes sense to use complaints as a methodology so mas nindot jud og gamit gamiton ang mga reklamo as a methodologies para daghang tao ang makinabang or makibenefits o magka-interest sa ato research. For example, kana, di ba pag kita ang customer, i-check man na una ang background aning uh, restaurant before ta mag-decide nga kani. Ay, nindot ni siyang uh, restaurant. Ay, nindot magka-on din na restaurant. Then, if ang kana nga restaurant kay naasay ka ng lain nga background like na ay gapang ga panglibak anak nga restaurant so maka una una jud ta nga ay lain man day ni siya dili na lang ta ni mukaon ang restaurant then b explain the survey dates and what you were trying to accomplish with the survey so, explain daw na to ang petsa sa atong survey o kung unsa ang atong gusto mahuman ani atong survey. Number 5. Focus your, on your accomplishments. To narrow down the accomplishment you want to present, think about what made you proudest during the time period. Maybe it was calming anxious visitors. Maybe it was coaching others. Don't just throw too many details at readers. So if magkolekta o data, situ it nga mag-focus lang yun ta dito sa mga importante nga resulta. Kanandili na need nga ipakita tanan or iingon tanan resulta sa ato survey. Mag-focus lang yun ta dito sa mga almost perfect na resulta. Letter A. Another method you can use to do this is the STAR method. This method involves briefly describing a situation and task, the action you took to accomplish it, and the result you achieve. As with the CAR method, the goal here is to link problems with the results and to explain how you reach them. And then, Mas nice or better jud nga ang atong gamito na data is kaning ginatawag nga star method or star bar. For example, ratings from 1 to 5, if unsa ang resulta na sa muabot o 4 and 5, maulang jud ang atong i-ingon or i-state kay mauraman ang mga importante. Focus on such things are degree of difficulty, one of a kind, first time, high visibility, meeting deadlines, innovation, and your work scope and impact. So, kanisha ang focus ani niya kay ang degree of difficulty or kalisod sa atong nakaagi para lang makakup up ani nga solution. And see, an example would be to explain that when you started the project, Volunteer turnover was at 35%. You established mentorship for workers and started a meeting. As a result, volunteers turnover had dropped to 15%. As this example shows, the accomplishment don't have to, to be excessively worthy as long as they provide the correct linkage. So, giingon diri ang uh, tung time nga nag-start pa ang project na ay 35% na mga volunteer. Pero, tung time nga nagpa-meeting na or nagpa-mentorship na, nibaba naman ni noon o kanang 
15%. So, nagpasabot nga kung naatay gusto nga ma-accomplish, dili na nato need nga kanang pataasun pang istorya pero layo rade ay kaayo sa tinuod nin. Ang kinahanglan nato na kanang tama-tama ra pero kanang mahatag lang nato ang correct nga linkage. Good day everyone. I am Karin Jensi Quasito, one of the reporters of Group 1. So my assigned task is how to create a strong content about explain your value and proofread the report before submitting it. So let's have first the explain your value. So what is your value? From the word value, it is regard that something is held to deserve that your importance or your work or your usefulness for the organization. So don't just say what your results are. You need to also explain why those accomplishments have value to your organization. So the results section should be state the findings without bias or interpretation. And it will be arranged in a logical sequence. And also it is particularly necessary if your re research paper includes data generated from your research. Just like for example, let's say you started holding meetings. So what? What value did that create for the organization? Think it through if there is no concrete value, maybe you should highlight something else. Or in other words, you should be highlighted the key points or something that is make a concrete value that may wanted to ask and you wanted to make. Another thing is, if meetings have increased volunteers morally as evidence in a decline in our absent days, then you've demonstrated value. It might be the employees who are highly morally stay motivated towards they complete their tasks in order to more effectively. Proof to the report before submitting it. So what is proofread, proofreading a report? So it is involved the reading your document to correct the smaller typographical, grammatical, and spelling errors. So you are defeating the purpose of an accomplishment report if you turn in something close together and unprofessional. So proofreading helps us to check that we have an unnecessary or included included everything we wanted to say in any piece of writing so it gives us a chance to review our work and to add anything we may have made we have missed out or it helped us to iron out little unnecessary errors we have been made then proofread the report grammar punctuation and spelling errors set it down for the night and read it again in the morning don't write the report at the last minute so it says that no. we must check it before we submit it so proofreading eliminates mistakes in grammars punctuation capitalization spelling and formatting allowing us to communicate our message accurately and effectively so print out a hard copy and check that for proofing errors sometimes a person's eyes get wet into the computer screen to the degree that they skip over obvious errors so di dyan na tumalagkayan nga na ay mga tao nga magkuan ilahang mata so dapat naatay hard copy para to check that for our proofing errors Good day everyone, I am Cynthia Mercado and my assigned topic is all about how to use effective language. So how to use effective language? Number one, address any negatives in a positive fashion. If there is something that you didn't meet expectations on, it's better not to dodge it. Don't make it as the central focus. 
of the report but do address it. So we can't avoid sometimes that we have expectations that we don't meet or achieve. Maybe we still need to improve or still have to do something. Or maybe what we expect is not for us. Pero hindi natin ito kailangang iwasan. Hindi natin kailangang mawala ng pag-asa. Remember, ang lahat ng bagay na nangyayari ay may dahilan. So instead na mag-worry, so maghanap tayo ng paraan upang ito ay tugunan. Huwag natin itong isentro sa ating report. Letter A. Handle the areas where you didn't do so well with positive language. For example, focus on the concrete steps that you are taking to address the issue rather than focusing on blame or excuses. So instead na mag-focus tayo sa mga sisihan o sa mga negatibong nangyayari or negatibong mga bagay, so let's focus on the concrete steps or mga konkretong hakbang upang ating tugunan or matugunan ang mga issue. Then, letter B, don't blame others in an accomplishment report. Stay focused on what you've done. Stay positive. Focus on the things that you and your group did well. Single out areas that you can't help. So, don't blame others. Instead, encourage them. Para, hindi sila mawala ng tiwala sa sarili at mawala ng pag-asa. So, encourage them. Then, let them know na na-appreciate mo rin ang kanilang mga efforts. Kahit na hindi naging successful, but always, always put in our minds na ang pag-appreciate sa mga nagawa ng iba ay magbibigay sa kanila ng saya, tiwala, at pag-asa na kahit sa kahit anong mangyari o kahit anong mga output or mga resulta na mga ginagawa ay manatili pa rin sa kalang sarili na hindi nila kailangang mag-give up hindi nila kailangang tumigil at mawala ng pag-asa dahil ikaw mismo either member either ikaw ay isang membro or leader ang iyong positibong komento or encouragement sa kanila ay makakatulong ito rin ay makakatulong sa iyo. Dahil, dyan rin makikita mo kung gaano kasaya or kung gaano ka-epektibo ang pagkakaisa. So, instead na sisihin mo sila, gawin mong sentro or gawin mong or itun mo sa iyong sarili ang mga positibong nangyayari. Huwag kang mawala ng pag-asa. Dahil lahat ng bagay, lahat ng problema ay may solusyon. So, kung meron man tayong hindi nakamit or may mga failures man ng mga nangyayari, lahat ng yan ay may rason. Pero, sa kabila ng mga bagay na yan, huwag nating kalimutan na may Diyos na laging gumagabay at tutulong sa atin upang maging successful ang ating ginagawa. Lagi na natin tatandaan na lagi tatandaan at isa buhay na gawin ang tama, sumunod sa kanya. At magtiwala rin sa sarili. Ang lahat ay magiging posible sa Diyos kung tayo mananalig at hindi mawala ng pag-asa. So, good morning. I am R. Joshua F. Kamaya. So, I am reporting this. Number two, for how to use effective language. Number two, use numbers and matrices. If you can be very speci- specific, your responses will be seem more credible. Whenever possible, Back up what you say with something measurable. So if you are, 
very specific daw sa imong mga pangistorya ang mga responses will be seem credible or mga kanang masabtan kung possibly kung possible pwede na to siya mabakapan kung ang sa atong istorya with something measurable na may kabuluhan for letter A generic superlatives like outstanding or dependable aren't very meaningful telling someone I had an excellent year is something that anyone can say so in letter A generic superlatives daw like outstanding or dependable is kanang mga word na dili kayo na to makabulok kanang dili kayo makabuluhan or para sa to dili kayo meaningful meaningful enough so except telling that we're gonna tell someone I had an excellent year kay ang I had an excellent year is something that anyone can say so tananta kanang mas dali siya my story or mas meaningful siya kontra sa duha so for letter B remember this phrase show don't tell rather than telling people you had an excellent year show them true details and matrices what you did that was excellent instead of saying you're good at customer relations cite the result of customers satisfactions surveys later you receive a lack of customers complaints so for letter B show them show don't tell so, pakitaan daw dili puro salita so Kung si kikag ingon daw og kanang I had an excellent ye, excellent year. So, extent of telling that daw kanang ipakita nimo ang kana siya nga nagid ka excellent year through details and matrices like ang nakay mga customers customer satisfaction surveys the letters received from your customers or compliance para mas masabtan nila dili lang bahin sa imong pag -istorya. so letter C use numbers saying you handled a large stuff doesn't mean much if we don't know how large it is use numbers to expand the size of a budget and the out and to outline the scope of duties. So for letter C daw, kinahanglan po nato ulay siya yung magamit og numbers. Saying that kung saying that you had a you handled kanang dako nga staff nga duha ka balo kung unsa siya ka dako. So we're gonna use numbers para ma-express ang size sa atong sa budget kung unsa siya ka dako. And sa outline sa sa large staff ng imong ginagunitan para mas makabalo ka kung unsa siya ka mas mabal-an nato kung unsa ang yang kanang unsa siya ka dako kinahanglan nato gamit og numbers para mas masabta nato ang ang mas masabtan ang iyang pag expand so siya kada ko or large para ma-express na to ang size of a budget and to outline the scope of duties so dito lang dito lang po nagtatapos yung aking report thank you po Good hello, good afternoon. This is the continuation report on how we use effective language. Third one is, tell the truth in all cases. Do not exaggerate, do not lie. If you're caught doing it, you could get in a big trouble. That is when we write or do a project implementation report or accomplishment report, we must tell the truth. 
about the project's success and the process of carrying it out. It must contain accurate, valid, and concrete data. The other problem with lying, even the obvious omission, is that you're not going to end up being confident in the end and you won't be able to improve. When we say omission, it is something neglected, instead of leaving something out or failing to do something specially that is uh, required by duty or procedure. Example, when one team member or kanang himo sa kanang report kani tells a lie about the project success and it's all about uh, it's all about his or her contribution other than including other teammates at the end of the project he or she will not um, confident or proud and will he will not he or she will not improve sa kanang puro atik lang ang katong mga information nga gipangintak dito ah or gipangbutang dito ah sa report so di jud na siya effective all data uh, presented must be accurate because um, you're creating a report that must uh, proven di ba ka na ma-prove dyan siya and credible that would be imbis na mga tika rather do an honest assessment of the time period at hand both weaknesses as well as positive address the weaknesses just find a positive way to do it it uh, ka nang direct siya na pagkadetalye o at the same time honest um for um for instance uh, so when we um uh, encounter weaknesses we must plan the best way we are the best way to address them positively so for instance when we write accomplishment report must be specific and true information about the team progress goals uh the goal set mga goals for that project that was problems encountered and i na na observe or na encountering a problems my resolution my resolution na true kanang pag decision ninyo as a team kung say pagabuhimoon mga suggestion or kana iyong mga hakbang para masolusyonan siya na naka-agree ang tanan team teammates so and the description of unplanned activities dapat na include na siya tanan include na siya um dili dili pangatik na kuan ng mga activities dapat is ka nang na, na, nahitabo jud this one is um for recognize others it's uh it's very relevant to recognize others uh contribution to the success of the project implementation through accomplish accomplishment report those teammates uh, at teammates teammates that were part of the project must be included if it is necessary so napaka halaga ang mga ka teamwork nimo ka teamwork nga nagtabang pud ana para ana nga project so many business and technical writing classes suggest that you not uh use the pronoun i you, uh, we don't have to use the pronoun I. You can do this in some cases in accomplishment report though. Example, number A, uh, letter A, for example, you may want to say, I convinced 100 people. However, don't forget the other people who contributed to the success set. Refer to the team when applicable. In this example, we don't have to use I, pronoun I. This is not effective language. So instead, we use the pronoun, pronoun na I. Pwede ito mo gamit o ganang we. Since you are not only doing the project, instead of saying I convinced 100 people, uh, we should uh, use we. Example, we convinced 100 people or our team convinced 100 people. Letter B, you will gain points by seeming like you're not arrogant. Vary sentence structure so every sentence doesn't start with the word R. So, diligid dapat na to uh, gamiton ang word na I. Ang ganyan mo ay sa kanang pagpunt na to sa accomplishment report. Okay, team man mo, nagtabang ana ang project, uh, dapat naka-include ta na. Uh, Naka-state ang kind ang, ang pag ang gamiton ng pronoun is dapat uh, uh, effective like we or our team anana and so when we uh, construct sentence says the accomplishment in an accomplishment report we don't have 
to be arrogant in indicating that you have more contributions. It must be true that your teammates work together to complete um, the project successfully. Every sentence must include a statement indicating that all members contributed to, to that project. That is the proper way or appropriate way to create an effective report on accomplishment.